when looking at orbital diagrams and electron configurations, we're going to discuss uh, where an atom's electrons are, or um, I'll just say where they go, and the construction of an orbital diagram has to follow this specific pattern. And when we're building an orbital diagram, we are going to be concerned about energy levels. And remember that is the principal quantum number in. And that starts at 1 and the values increase uh, as counting numbers. n equals 1 is the first energy level. n equals 2 is the second. n equals 3 is the third. And this n value also corresponds to the periodic table. So this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as we go down the periodic table, is also a representation of the energy levels. And so we'll see how that affects our orbital diagram. So here, the energy levels go across the orbital diagram. And then within an energy level, we have sublevels or subshells. And those values depend on n. So the subshells describe shapes, and they're designated by letters. So we have an S, and then a P, and then D and F. And then the orbitals are actually the number of places where the electrons can be found. So if we look here, the energy levels go across, and then this group, the S uh, letter designation would be an S subshell. And anytime we have the letter S, we have a spherically shaped orbital. And remember, an orbital is really just a probability density of finding an electron. So an orbital does not have boundaries, but we draw them as though they do. So a 1s orbital would be a spherically shaped region. 2s would just be larger. It would still have that spherical shape. And a 3s orbital would be even larger, and so forth. So these n values are the same n values that we saw on the hydrogen atom. The P subshell is the group of all three orbitals. So the subshell, sometimes called a sublevel, uh, the P sublevel shows up when n equals 2. So the rules that we had discussed earlier when n equals 2, there are two subshells. When n equals 3, there's 1, 2, 3 subshells. When n equals 4, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 subshells. So this group is the P subshell. And then here, this group is the D subshell. And the shape of the P, um, the P orbitals, you should have this. The distance across here, the diameter, would be the same distance in this direction. So the p orbitals go, the electron density goes out the same distance, and there happen to be three of these, and this orbital would be perpendicular to the page. So this is like in the y direction, this would be in the x direction, and then in the z direction, which would come out of the paper. We have that. So a 3p orbital is just larger. And so I'm not going to draw too many of these because then we'll have a big mess on the paper. The d's are more complicated shapes, so we're not really going to look at those. The orbital um, is really just the, in this case, the orbital is the line representing where the electron can go. So the orbital is a line representing 
where electrons uh, can be, and I'm going to say found. Again, there's that probability there. So this would be a 4f orbital. This line would be a 3d orbital and a 2p orbital. So an orbital is the specific place where an electron can be found. And depending on an atom and how many electrons there are, we're going to put the electrons in orbitals, and we're going to do that in order. So the order for filling, we call it, is 1s, and then 2s, 2p, and then 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, and we start here. So if we draw arrows in that direction, from the top right-hand corner, we fill the 1s, then we come back and fill the 2s, then the 2p and the 3s. After we fill the 3p, here's where we seem to go out of order. So after the 3p subshell is filled, we go to the 4s. So we just need to remember to fill the 4s before the 3d, because the 4s is actually lower in energy because of that spherical shape. And then we could continue on, 5s, 5p. So we would come back and fill the 3d, then the 4p, and the 5s. So we're going to, uh, we could use this, but we've got to remember that there's always one orbital within this s sublevel. p means there are three orbitals, three of them. And then the Ds, we need to remember that there are five orbitals. So the pattern increases by odd number. So in the F, there are seven orbitals. And the reason for this strange pattern comes out of uh, complicated math that we don't want to look at. So once we select the atom that we're going to draw an orbital diagram for. Depending on how many electrons there are, we'll put them in the orbitals, and then from the orbital diagram, we'll come up with an electron configuration. So I generally refer to an orbital diagram as kind of a blueprint on a building where you can find certain things. And the electron configurations end up looking more like an address or a code where we can find the electrons.